Welcome to Journey Through the Yamas, Brahmacharya, brought to you by One Down Dog On Demand. I'm Courtney, and I'll be here with you today, guiding you through this beautiful practice. Um, so just so we can all kind of get a lay of the land and be on the same page, um, uh, a little um, background on what yamas and niyamas are. So the yamas and the niyamas are the first and second limb of the eight limb path. Um, which is outlined in the Yoga Sutras. And I always just kind of say the Yoga Sutras is like the handbook to yoga, if you will. Um, it describes what yoga is, why we do yoga, what are the benefits of yoga, what are some of the challenges that we might find on our yogic path, and how we can either avoid them or um, move through them, right, move past them. Uh, so the first and second limb, um, the eight limb path is really kind of this path to our highest best self, um, liberation, and some would even say enlightenment. Uh, the first and second limbs um, really are the framework for a moral code. So how we can implement yoga into uh, our day-to-day -day lives, um, how we can really create a lifestyle out of the yoga practice. Um, the first limb um, is the yamas, and that translates you know, loosely to restraints, um, which sounds so constricting. Um, but really, it's just these things that we want to be aware of, um, these um, tendencies, these habits that we want to be mindful of um, on our, you know, on our yogic journey um, as we walk through the world, as we um, are in relationship to other, right? So the yamas really is about being in relationship to anything outside of self. However, I'm a firm believer that yoga starts within, <laughs> with ourselves. It ain't nobody else's fault. <laughs> it ain't nobody else's problem. It's us, right? So um, I'll always kind of start here, um, which I think relationship to self is the strongest, most important relationship. Um, and then we move outward. So the yama that we're focusing on today um, is the fourth. We've gone through ahimsa, non-harming, satya, truthfulness, asteya, non-stealing, um, and now we are on brahmacharya, which a common modern um, translation is moderation. Um, you know, traditionally and classically, when yoga is really just practiced by like Brahmin priests, um, brahmacharya would sometimes be translated as like celibacy or abstinence. Um, but that's no fun. No, I'm joking. So um, now we really think of it as just being um, thoughtful about the, the things that we choose to engage with um, and the things that really kind of drain us of our energy. So um, absolutely, it can be sex, but um, it can also be the food that we eat, um, uh, what we are drinking. So anything that we're kind of like intaking um, and putting into our bodies, it can also be... Um, the people that we surround ourselves with, right? Do they fill us up? Um, do we feel um, that there is an, an equal exchange of energy? Or do we always feel like tired and depleted when we leave some people that we that we have in our circle? It can also be um, the things that we watch, right? And especially right now in this current climate, um, there is, you know, this, uh, I, I find that I have this kind of desire to, to know what's going on, but in doing so, um, I, I feel a lot of fear um, and I feel a lot of anger um, by, the, by the things that I continue to watch. So just being really thoughtful and mindful of that. Um, so those are some ways that we can really think about um, the practice of brahmacharya and implementing brahmacharya into our everyday life. Just kind of going through um, and um, acknowledging and kind of being aware um, and observing the things that we engage with. Um, and again, do they fill us up uh, or do they kind of take us off of the yogic path? Um, so as always, we're going to start there um, and then we end with um, uh, either an asana practice, a chant, pranayama, some way to then really embody the practice of the yama or, or niyama that we're focusing on. Um, with brahmacharya, um, I really think about boundaries, um, creating healthy boundaries um, with uh, the things that we engage with. Um, and in, in, in order to do that, we really have to um, pay attention um, because so many of the things that we kind of just like give our energy to, we do so out of habit. Um, 
we might come home and always have that glass of wine because that just feels like really ritualistic and habitual, right? Um, we might always kind of like, we might stay in relationships because that feels really safe. And it's just something that we kind of like lean on because it's something we've are always done. Um, so really paying attention, um, I think is the first step to, um, to creating a healthy, practice of brahmacharya, um, slowing down, um, taking time to really be curious, um, to reflect, um, and create those boundaries. So um, in the practice we'll do today, the asana practice, um, it'll be a really slow moving practice, and it's only going to be a few minutes, right? So it's something that you can do every day, if you are like, I need brahmacharya in my life, and I really need to know how to embody that and really like kind of like focus on that every day, you can do it every day. Or it's something you can come back to when you might be feeling like um, you're living a life of excess and you're just feeling really depleted. Um, so we're moving slowly, um, and then we're going to feel really supported um, in the practice as well. So um, my suggestion is to have those blocks that was in the description, so hopefully you already have them. And if you don't, you can always pause. That's the beauty of On Demand. So um, grab those blocks. I'm gonna come off of my poof. And I bring the soles of my feet together. So I'm gonna face the front of my mat. So soles of the feet together. Think about pressing your feet into one another. So again, when we talk about like boundaries and we talk about kind of pushing against what might feel the most comfortable um, and really questioning um, what we need um, uh, to thrive, um, it does, uh, it, it does um, uh, require an awareness. So really pushing into um, the soles of the feet, both feet together, lifting up tall as you inhale. And then you start to slowly crawl forward. So we're not just moving right into the depth, right? There's a slowness, there's a heightened awareness. Um, there is, um, again, this awareness of boundaries as we move. And instead of thinking about moving your knees to the earth, think about moving them wider, side to side. So you're creating a little more space in your inner thighs. Keep pushing the feet together. I'm flaring my toes, so drawing the toes towards your shins. And then start to walk yourself back up. You're gonna extend your, doesn't matter, left or right leg, because we're gonna do both. I'm gonna extend my left and pull my right foot inside my groin, right? So one leg is extended, one leg is still bent. And then I'm gonna to start to walk forward slowly. So now we're not in only in inner thighs, we're starting to add in hamstring. I'm not thinking about going too far, especially if you're hypermobile, right? Your tendency is gonna be like to lay down. But again, thinking about this practice of brahmacharya, which is really an awareness of our habits. And are they serving us always? Start to walk back up. We're gonna to move to the other side. Switch legs. Okay. Lengthen and then start to walk forward slowly. So there is a rhyme to the reason. I, there's a reason why we're kind of working in the hips, um, the inner thighs, the hamstrings, um, on that second chakra energy. And Brahmacharya, again, um, kind of originates um, with the sex talk. <laughs> but um, addiction um, to people and things a lot of times can live in that second chakra as well. And so opening it up. Walk back. And then last one. Extend both legs out. And this is where those blocks can come in. So I'm gonna pull my blocks closer to me. I'm gonna put them on their medium height, but you can take them high or low depending on what you need. I'm flexing my feet. I think I'm pressing my heels out. Yeah, so my legs are really active. And I'm gonna slowly gonna start to fold. You can bring my, your forearms to your blocks. Again, if you don't need the blocks, that's totally fine. But I like to feel nice and supported.
So we're not just dumping, we're not just going to our deepest, but rather moderation. Mm-hmm. And start to walk back up nice and slow. You can move those blocks forward. Uh-huh. Grab behind your knees, pull them in. I'm going to cross my legs. And just feel that space you've created in your hips. Bring your hands together at your heart. Namaste.